Today, we're diving into a fundamental aspect of photography that can truly make or break your shots. And we're going to be talking about the shutter speed. Shutter speed, as the name suggests, is all about speed. Imagine the camera shutter like a pair of curtains, where when you press the shutter button, these curtains open and then close. Now, the time that it takes for them to open and close is what we're referring to as shutter speed. Now, there are fast shutters and then there are slow shutters. A fast shutter speed such as 1 over 1000 of a second freezes action. It's perfect for capturing fast moving subjects without any motion blur. This also means that your images will be sharp and crisp. So then, people who shoot a lot of fast action like football, uh, race cars and so on tend to use really fast shutter speeds. On the flip side, a slow shutter speed like 1 over uh, 30 of a second or slower introduces some level of creativity. It allows you to capture motion like the smoothness of flowing water or light trails of passing cars. So if you've ever wondered how those images are made, it is simply made with a slow shutter. Well, amongst other things. But then of course, this slow shutter isn't just limited to light trails and blurring water. You can can actually blend this technique with other photography genres like portraits for instance and so you can use that to create some visually appealing images. Here's the other thing, shutter speed is not just about freezing or blurring motion, shutter speed affects the amount of light that hits your sensor as well. Now a fast shutter means that you're going to reduce the amount of time that the sensor is exposed to light, making it great for very very bright scenes. In contrast, a slow shutter speed lets in more light, making it handy for low light situations. This can be advantageous when shooting outdoors and you want to control the amount of light that hits your sensor. There are other factors that can influence this of course, but we're dealing with just the shutter speed today. In this short clip, you will notice that the histogram is leaning towards the right. In a situation like this, it is likely that some parts of the image and the bright parts in general will be overexposed. And now what this also means is that if we keep pushing and lowering our shutter speed and getting in more light into our sensor, like the, the further we go, we will lose all information and the bright parts of the image. Generally, once you set the aperture in ISO to a level that you want to keep for your shot, you're then left with adjusting the shutter speed to dial it all in. A good exposure usually has the histogram properly balanced where the graph isn't leaning too much to the left or too much to the right, as that will mean you're either underexposing or overexposing. Now here are a few quick tips that I want you to remember. At least for handheld shots, try and remember to keep your shutter speed at least as fast as your lens. And what I mean by that is if you're using a 50mm lens, your minimum shutter should be 1 over 50th and if you're using a 100mm, your minimum should be 1 over 100 to eliminate camera shake. With that said, still experiment as much as possible with different shutter speeds to get different results. For example, you can use a fast shutter speed if you want to capture sports and action and then use slow shutter speed for creative effects. Remember that there's no one size fits all rule and that your creative vision should guide your shutter speed choice but still bear in mind these little rules to keep you guided. Thanks for joining in today, I will catch you guys in the next one and remember, don't ever give up.